Hi, I'm Tara, and welcome to Let's Do Books. I'm excited because today, author E.J. Noyes is here to talk about her journey with lesbian fiction. Emily is the author of five lesbian romances, all of which are out everywhere right now from Bella Books. Welcome, Emily. Hi, how are you going? Good, thanks. So, how did you first discover lesbian fiction? What was that first book? My journey with lesfic actually sort of goes a little bit backwards. I discovered it because I wrote one. Um, and until I had written my debut, I was tell I'd actually never written or rather never read a lesbian fiction book. And I had a friend who said, you know, if you've written this book, maybe you should read some. And I sort of went, oh, yeah, okay, good idea. So that's sort of how I got into it was, yeah, I wrote one. Okay. I have more questions. <laughs> That's really interesting. You're the first <laughs> I know, person who I know. said that. Yep. Because I've had some authors will say it wasn't actually published fiction they started with. It was fanfic. But in that case, then, how did what prompted you to start writing? I keep saying this and it sounds silly, but I was bored. Uh, <laughs> and I just, you know, I have uh, a really active mind and I just sort of had this idea and I said, I'm just going to blurt out some words um, and I did that and I sent that to a friend I have in Chicago and she sort of went well this is actually really good maybe you should keep going uh, so I did and it was actually her who, who prompted me to sort of I was sort of struggling with just you know having never written a book before what to actually do and and you know I don't plan anything I'm just a fly by the seat of my pants sort of person uh, and she said, why don't you read some lesbian fiction and just sort of see how they build conflict and tension and drama and all that sort of stuff. So, And she actually sent me my very first lesfic all the way from America, a paperback. So that was, uh, yeah, that was my start. So this is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you sound I'm lost for words. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to figure out which question to ask you first because I feel like I want to ask three all at once, but that's not possible. So the first one I'm going to ask is your publisher is Bella, who is yes. one of the premier lesfic publishers. And mm -hmm. how did I you end up with that. them? Yeah, like if you weren't if you weren't reading it, how did you know where to submit it? How did you end up with that relationship? Well, before I submitted, I I did read some lesfic. So I suppose I had written Ask Tell. I'd sort of had it critiqued and, you know, friends picking it apart and whatnot. And I sort of got it to a point where I felt as comfortable as I thought I would with it. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of ignored it for a little while. And I read some lesfic. Um, I actually found Bella. I think I probably Google searched like lesbian publisher or lesbian books or something like that. And I went onto the Bella Books website. Because what I was really interested in was, I mean, if anyone's read my books, they know that they're in first person. Mm -hmm. And, oh goodness, I could tangent off this for an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose the first thing, being a person who'd never written a book before, I had, I actually didn't know that it was first person, present tense, again, until it was pointed out to me. Because when I read, I just... I just read a book and I love it and I don't sort of go, well, this is third person past and this is second, you know, it just, mm -hmm. I just, I'm just into it. And, um, well, the first thing I found out was that I had basically committed the biggest literary sin of all time. <laughs> um, so I went to Bella and I, I was just looking through all of their authors and I was looking at samples of their published work and I found one that was in first person because I was just curious and that was Mina Borsellino Flips Out by Sarah Marks. Very funny book in first person. I sort of went, okay, well, okay, so this publisher publishes first person books, tick. Um, and then I did a, a pitch contest on Twitter. Again, I had no idea that I was actually pitching agents or publishers. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and I, I submitted to a publisher that's sort of a broader LGBTQI publisher who I won't name and was rejected and then I went well right I'm gonna suck it up and I'm gonna go to my number one that I really want Bella and I submitted and I received an answer yes please rather quickly and it sort of just went from there that's pretty cool it was pretty exciting 
So what was that first book that your friend sent you? Ammonite by Nicola Griffith. So. Oh. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it was actually quite an interesting choice because I don't really like sci-fi fantasy sort of books. Mm-hmm. As a rule, I mean, I, I, I will read them, but I sort of read it and I was, you know, I was, oh, yeah, okay, well, this is interesting, you know. And then when, oh, is it, I can't remember the name, it was so long ago, Marg, I think it is, the main character, sort of mm. the romance builds and I was just like, I just got this, like, gut feeling, like, oh, my God, like, this actually, like, it's a thing, like, you know, and I was just gobsmacked by it, so, Yeah. So you kept reading. I did. Oh, I kind of, I just, I think I sort of just went on then. I just went on a bit of a spending spree, which I hid from my wife <laughs> um, <laughs> uh-huh. of eBooks, you know, and I sort of, I, I didn't really hit Amazon so much as I was just looking at mostly, I think probably Bella and maybe Bold Strokes and just sort of looking at their uh, their catalogs and, and, you know, like Radcliffe, Karen Cormaker, Jay, KG McGregor, all that sort of stuff. And just sort of devouring what I could and, yeah, sort of just mushroom from there, really. You're listening to The Lesbian Talk Show. TheLesbianTalkShow.com, your hub of podcast information. And were there any favorites that stood out for you or are there any kind of like any themes that are your favorite jams or anything like that that you find yourself going back to whenever you see more of them? I'm a sucker for a celesbian. I really am. Um, Celebrity romance, especially, you know, like it's one celebrity, one, you know, like in quotes, regular person, that sort of thing. Uh, Like Karen Cormaker's Stepping Stone. I absolutely love that one. Uh, and then, of course, Captain of Industry, um, where Jennifer Lamont turns up as well. Just, yeah, what else? I sort of like, I don't know, it sounds like a cop-out, but I really just like everything. <laughs> uh-huh. Except I, I do I do find fantasy uh, and sci-fi hard to get into. Just the detail of those sort of the word, uh, the world building and the, the really intense description it just sort of it fries my brain a little bit so mm-hmm. I, that would probably be my my least favorite you know i will read them but yeah i definitely am just more a, a romance and something that's not ultra slow burn i do sort of struggle with that just like come on guys get on like let's, <laughs> let's do it like come on uh-huh. <laughs> so i feel like that might explain turbulence a little bit <laughs> yeah that one was i mean i know i shouldn't say it but it's I wouldn't say it's my least favorite, but it's definitely the one. I think maybe I'm not even sure if least popular is the way to describe it, but it is definitely different. It, I mean, it is just like an erotic romance. Um, it's fun though. I enjoyed than, it. It is fun. Yeah, um, it is fun, but it's sort of hard because, um, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, I suppose it's just sex as a communication tool, but you know, it worked for what it was. But. Um, yeah, it's definitely straight into it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there are definitely other erotic romances that do that um, hmm. and do yeah. well like that as well. Like, did you ever read um, uh, The Sex Therapist Next Door by Megan O'Brien? I have. I do like her work very much. And that's, oh, you're right, that is the same. But it does have a good sort of plot and a good, I think, you know, building of Diana's character to sort of mm-hmm. learning to, you know, let someone in rather than holding them at arm's length all the time but yeah it's true so what do you think about where we're at as a genre especially as someone who like you're you've been a part of it for a few years now is that right yeah not uh probably three i would say yeah 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 Mm. so how like how do you how do you feel about it how do you feel about being a part of this community i suppose being a part of it feels pretty incredible and it was something that actually surprised me and something that was really unexpected was well I mean was the community sense of you know women who love reading about women who love women you know Mm -hmm. and just 
the sense of family around that is, I mean, it's again, nice description from an author. It's nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Um, I mean, as, I mean, are we talking about as a genre as in romance or just lesbic in general? Uh, either. I think we've got a lot of room, I wouldn't say improvement, but room for growth, lesbic, I think with inclusivity, but I think that's part of the community as a whole. And I would so love to see us pushing into sort of more mainstream fiction, you know, like just becoming more widespread, more accepted, Mm -hmm. just like a, you know, just seeing us in, in all bookstores instead of just queer bookstores and things like that would just be absolutely fantastic, but... You know, we've just sort of got to keep working at that sort of thing. So how would you say that becoming an author and becoming a part of this community has changed your life? I'm a lot more anxious than I used to be. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. You know, there is is certainly an aspect of, you know, stress with writing a book. I mean, it's incredibly fun and it's incredibly rewarding. But, you know, deadlines – concern about how people are going to take it all that sort of thing does add an element of sort of anxiety to the whole process but on the flip side the interaction with people you know hearing that they enjoyed something that I think particularly with us tell and ask me again you know which delves into PTSD which I had I'm not a doctor I've never been in the, in the military so I don't sort of get the deeper nuance of PTSD relating from sort of military things and to have people say, well, you know, I served and I have PTSD and I found this really, you know, just really beautiful and and sort of moving and that sort of thing is incredibly rewarding for me because I have an ego Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I like to be told, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's, I think that's part of it. And I think anyone who says that they don't enjoy praise might be telling a little bit of an untruth, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that the good aspects of, people enjoying my work far outweighs the anxiety of having to have the work out there. But yeah, sort of probably should have started with the good and then gone, yeah, but I'm a little bit more anxious (laughs) instead of just saying, I'm really anxious now. (laughs) No, I think it's good to be honest about anxiety because that's, I mean, it's a real part of it. So Mm. are there any books on your to be read list or that are going to be released in the nearest future that you are especially excited about? Oh, I was going to think about uh, it's Lee Winter's spin off of Breaking Character. Mm-hmm. Changing the Script, I think it's called. I'm very excited about that. Mm-hmm. And I have sort of, <laughs> I did give her a little nudge and say, you know, like, come on, what about, you know, Bess and Summer? You've got to put them in there. Um, yes if, or just can you just write some deleted scenes for us please <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd uh-huh. like a little add-on yeah I'm pretty excited about that one but to be honest I don't read as much lesbian as I used to I find I can I've sort of moved a little bit more to audiobooks I, I sort of found that listening is a little bit easier for me because when I'm reading lesbian I tend to especially a romance, I tend to get sort of little bits of inadequacy sort of feeling, um, especially when you're reading, you know, really great work. Mm -hmm. And it was just making it harder for me to write. But listening, it's more like just enjoying a performance rather than just like scrutinizing the words and go, shit, I really wish I'd written that. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Yeah, so I, but I am looking forward to that one. And it's going to be an auto buy for sure. Me too. I do love her books so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So because you came at this a little unconventionally, what advice would you give to people who are thinking about writing for the first time? I'll steal it from Nike. Just do it. (laughs) Um, I think that's the advice I wish that I'd sort of been given was that just, just write. Doesn't matter if it, you know, if you think it's not good or if you think it's not as good as somebody else's, just write, write and do the best that you can and ask for help, ask for advice. You know, I don't think I've met a mean person, you know, that I've sort of spoken to in the lesbian community. You know, everyone's so helpful. Everyone's always wants to talk. So, yeah, just write and ask for advice. Sage words, very wise. They are. <laughs> 
where can people find you online if they would like to connect with you? Probably if you want to chat to me, which I'm always up for. I'm on Twitter at, I call it, I say Grocket. Um, it's a bit weird and I should change it, but I'm sort of stuck on it. Z-G-R, <laughs> uh, Z-G-R-O-K-I-T. Or I'm on Facebook as EJ Noise. Or if you want to find where my books are, you can always jump onto the Bella Books site and find me there. That is all for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. No worries. Thanks for having me. I'm Tara, and you've been listening to Les Do Books. You can email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with your questions or comments, or if you're an author who's interested in joining me on the show to talk about the lesbian you love or trends that have you interested, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this episode, please check out the show notes where you'll find a Patreon link for the Lesbian Talk Show or visit patreon.com slash the lesbian talk show. Patrons get exclusive content like bonus podcasts and author interviews that no one else gets access to. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for the Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or Spotify.